This is Coogan Cassius for IFL Team in association with MTK Global via Skype. I have the one and only Mr. Gareth A. Davies. How are you? Good evening. I'm just having my little evening tequila, Coogan. It's uh, the sun's about to set on this uh, Monday morning, which feels like a perennial Sunday. Um, how am I? Uh, been here in my house for 12 days since I came out of hospital for my second heart procedure. Hot-footed it back from New York two weeks ago yesterday uh, after the caved-in Bellator event. Donald Trump saying that no more flights out from the Monday. So quickly changed my flight and came out on the Sunday morning, got back here, went into hospital on the Thursday. Didn't see anyone apart from one of my daughters who took me to hospital, came out the next day and I've been here ever since. Today was the first time I've been out and it was to pick my, up my, my medicine from the surgery that I've got to take and a quick nip around co-op to get some, some vegetables because I'm running quite low on food. But I mean, yeah, I mean, everybody knows this. We've never had a time like this. You know, I've been around 54 years, never had a time like this. I bicycle every day for an hour and it feels like the late 70s, early 80s. It's got that feel about it. Life is really, really, really simple. Um, how do I feel? Responsible. I think it's important to be safe. I think it's important, you know, I'm a grown man. It's important to be safe, but be caring. I've got 70 neighbours in my village and that's it. But if someone's got a problem, I'm going to help them. It's as simple as that. But other than that, you know, I'm recuperating from this heart procedure. Um, I've spoken to loads of people in the boxing and MMA world on the phone, rather like you're doing. I'm doing things on Skype. I'm busy with with everyone. Um, but but I'm trying to come to terms with what the planet's telling us at the moment. Maybe you know, I don't want to get too esoteric, but but. There's a message right now. I'd like to ask how you are, because I know that you're in isolation. You and I, we're kinetic. We're on the move all the time. We're like the boxers. We're on the road. We're, you know, I'm at home here sometimes. I'm in a big house in the countryside. I'm here for five, six, seven days sometimes. Then I'm off again. And it's very, very strange. How are you? I'm OK. I'm just, uh, yeah, it's trying to fill the days, really, and get your head around it, because I don't think anyone's really kind of got their head around what's going on, because we don't know really what's going on. We're just, we're being told what we're being told. And, um, yeah, I just think where we're at the start of this, we're not in the middle of it. We're not coming towards the end of it. We don't even know if we're at the start of it. That's that's the problem. We don't know if we're, this is the start of it, or it's about, we know it's about to get worse before it gets better. So, um, Gareth, just like everyone else, just trying to sort of keep busy every day and, of what kind of limited things you can be doing in your house. And uh, are you actually alone? I am currently alone, yes. But, but you have someone living with you. No, no, I live on my own, Gareth. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I am on my own. So, I can't work out at the moment. Like, I talk to people who have got like a household with kids or people who are like couples that aren't together all the time and now they're together all the time. And I'm, and I'm kind of starting to make my mind up that it's lonely or solitary being on your own, but it might be slightly easier than being around a group of people. Do you well, know what I mean? It, it, Gareth, you're probably right there. I think if you're used to kind of living on your own and being on your own, then this situation is you just got to get your head around not being able to go anywhere. But yeah. if you're kind of in a house seven days a week with a wife and kids where normally – one or two of you would go out to work and kids would be at school, et cetera, et cetera. But suddenly you're in an environment for weeks now where you're all in the same space. Then, yeah, that's kind of a, a, a different challenge altogether. But um, I was speaking to Ben Davison, when was it, yesterday, last night. And he was saying, and he made a very valid point, was all we're being told is to be patient, to be consistent to stop the scaling up of this spreading. Yeah. A uh, hundred years ago, we'd have been asked to go and enlist, put on a uniform and go to war. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's the third world war. We've got it easy in some ways. Um, those of us 
who we know, Adam Booth, Anthony Yard. Um, Adam Booth's father's not well, isn't, isn't he? Yeah, we um, saw him yesterday. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm very sorry for Anthony Yard. You know, listen to the lessons. I wrote a story with his quotes yesterday for The Telegraph. His dad was fit and well. Look at Anthony. Can you imagine what his dad's like? I don't know his dad, mm. but he's a kind of hench guy, you know? Um, and look, it's taken him. It's a lottery, this thing. So anyone watching this, anyone that's normally flippant about stuff, I, I, I'm as non-conformist as you are, as a lot of people that watch this who are in the boxing world. We're, we're creative non-conformists, I would call us. You know, we're miscreants, um, in, you know, trying to make sense of our lives. This is a time to listen as much as possible. I don't know if you watch the news a lot, but I do find myself watching the news a lot. Because I watch all seven here, Gareth. Yeah, because I, 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 I want to try and be informed. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the pattern that's been set makes sense. Mix less, it'll spread less. You see in the bigger cities, you and I are both out in the Essex countryside, um, you mix less, you're less likely to get it. If people mix less, it's less likely to spread quickly. Look what happened in Wuhan, a city of 11 million people. It took 12, 11 and a half weeks to, to, to stop the growth of it, to control the growth of it. Look how the spread is quickest in London. Look how fast it's developing in New York. The whole of California is the same as New York because it's spread out because it, they locked down very early. These are the things I'm taking out of it all. And very, very big figures who you and I speak to, who are big business people, who have global dealings, all the ones, and I'm sure you'll you'll ask me about them as, as we have this chat, Scott Coker, Eddie Hearn, Bob Arum, Frank Warren, they're all sitting tight in lockdown because they want to listen to what needs to be done. Even Eddie, who was out there, British Bulldog at the beginning, suddenly quelled when he realised the seriousness of this. That, that, that he couldn't go on with events. And it's really good to see from the people in our industry. Mm, absolutely. We're kind of, um, yeah, it's interesting to kind of see every day, obviously, it's difficult to talk about the sport that we love. And it's difficult to talk about future fights because the immediate future is so, so unsure. So, you know, I don't want this kind of chat with you to be everything about kind of coronavirus, but I do want to talk a little bit about boxing with you as well, Gareth. Um, Can I bring up one thing then, first of all, about boxing, right? I do not buy, and I'm not a big eSports fan, I did not buy Mike Tyson beating Muhammad Ali on points the other night, on Sunday night, in the World Boxing Super Series e-final I do not buy Tyson beating Ali on points. Are you suggesting that that was a fix? No, yeah. I'm not. I don't know. I, I I don't know the machinations of how they. They must have had people playing the game. No, but, I think it's just like like automated simulation. That's all I'm assuming it is. But it's, 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 I'm, it's, I'm, I'm, from from what the World Boxing Series though. But it was 114, 111 on all three judges' cards. Yeah, that means what is that? Um. Uh, Eight rounds to four. Um, oh, God, I can't work it out now. Um, no, no uh, was it? Now, Ali was down twice and, and Tyson was down once, wasn't he? Did you watch it? I haven't seen that fight, no. I I've skimmed it, it, but I haven't seen that, no. I just don't buy how a prime Ali loses 114, 111 to a prime Mike Tyson on points. Stewart's inquiry. No, I mean, it, it played out as it played out. But anyway, <laughs> I, do, I do think there'll be a lot more of that over the next few months, you know. Yeah, I think they're doing a middleweight one now. Is it a middleweight one? I think so. Yeah, yeah. By the 184,000 people watched that final, you know. Right. By the time they do the super flyweights, there'll be about four watching it, I think. Well, listen, it's great while this is going on, but obviously we need we need our sport to kind of return, but nothing can happen until the country's safe. So it is where we are with it, Gareth. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I do want to kind of ask you, and it's not really specific to boxing. I know, Gareth, you cover a lot of other events as, and sporting events as well, but apart from obviously having a huge impact on the economy, but for, for sporting 
uh, events and kind of the different sports. I mean, we see kind of the, the football league at the moment is pondering what to do, whether to kind of call the season off or, you know, um, be hopeful of continuing it. But across the board, sport's not going to be in a, a fantastic place for a little while, is it? I mean, when you look at it, haven't, hasn't everything but the Premier League been finished anyway for now? For the season? Well, in terms of the upcoming stuff that was coming up, I like, like the Euros is obviously not happening, but I don't know in regards to other leagues what they've done with that. Um, I, I, I don't know either. I thought the Premier League might carry on. but It I still carries on, on, depending on kind of what happens. Yeah. Well, will you ask that? Um, I know it's only March, what is it, March the 30th today, yeah? Mm. Um, it's a really scary thing to say, but possibly large crowds may not gather again till around September, I think, you know? Um, I mean, April, May, June, July, August... That's in the beginning of six months' time, five months' time. That is poss a possibility. Um, the you know when you think that Fury and Wilder is already off, and that's July the 18th. When you think that Eddie Hearn has rebooked Tottenham Hotspur Stadium for July the 25th, he's revealed, hasn't he? he? Told me that last week, but kind of revealed it in the last couple of days publicly. Um, uh, when you think that um, all he's moving his events forward, um, Bob Arum's written off the whole of April and May. Um, sorry, March and April. The Boxing Board have said nothing till May. I think there's no chance of May. You know, there's. I, don't, I think well, there's the very board of, the, Gareth. The board have said. Sorry, the board have said today that there will be no boxing in May. So. Oh, they've said May as well. Yeah, yeah. They've said May as well. They announced that this morning. Well, well they, I thought it was the end of April, but the end of May. There you go. So it's been extended. Yeah. So, so there's two months without it for a start. Um, you have to take into consideration boxers sparring um, and boxers. All right, if they're they're fit and ready, they're ready to go. But in the very big fights, they'll want to go into camp. You can't do camp at home, lifting Paris Fury as a weight, can you, for Tyson Fury, and telling the nippers to run out of the way and chasing them around the house. Uh, which has been very amusing. Look, um, it's an unprecedented time. I suspect we'll look back in five years' time and go, God, do you remember those six months when we had nothing? Mm. And, like, those people fell by the wayside. Those people lost their jobs. Those people died who we knew and who we didn't know. And it was a terrible time. Um, the we, we will look back on this as one of those extraordinarily and exceptional times. And we have got to stay positive about it. Um, that's why I don't really agree with the UFC going ahead and trying to just do, well, Khabib Nurmagomedov's stuck in Russia and can't move now. So that fight that the UFC were going to try and put on won't happen now with Tony Ferguson. I, I, I think there's more... There's, there's, there's more going on now than risking the health of boxers and staff and medical staff because you've got to have provision around it. You can't just put two blokes in a ring with a referee who've all maybe had a test and they're okay and they're, they're, they test negative for COVID-19 and they go ahead and do it. It doesn't work like that. There's a whole... I remember when I was at the Bellator event in Mohegan Sun that they went two weeks ago, they were going to do it behind closed doors and I was going to work on the TV. It was going to be broadcast on Sky. I was going to work on the TV, so I had a pass into the arena. Um, there was still something like 150 people to 200 people at the event. That's still a large gathering, you know. Um, I do. My instinct says, and my I don't know what yours is, Coogan, but my instinct says we will not have a bona fide boxing event with a crowd till September. That's my instinct. I don't know that. But it's it's look if you if you think it's going to take three months to quash this and we're what are we two weeks in that not, takes us, yeah. well not even but no, no. no not even but if that takes us to June you know um, or the end of June then we go into July um, will the schools go back for the summer 
uh, term, if they don't go back, there probably won't be mass gatherings. If kids are homeschooled till the summer holidays, they'll probably keep mass crowds apart. Mm. Then they'll they'll go back in September, and then maybe we'll get everything. Then football, boxing, the, the Six Nations again, music concerts, and then that's the problem. Everybody's fighting for a crowded landscape at that point. That's why when I spoke to Eddie Hearn the other day, he said, believe me, we're plotting and planning in the background. Frank Warren's plotting and planning in the background. Uh, Bob Arum, Al Heyman, all these guys, Scott Coker with Bellator, the UFC and Dana White, they're all plotting and planning in the background. They're all workaholics. They've got no choice but to do that. Mm. No, absolutely. I think right now it's impossible to give a time scale of anything because I think, especially while we're still in an isolation period, I think the first thing that will happen when the isolation period starts to ease off, then you can look at it. But if they're talking about us possibly being in isolation until June, I mean, that's what they're saying, isn't it? Possibly till June, if that's the case. While we're still in isolation, nothing's going to happen, is it? And we know that. Nothing can even think about happening. Uh, but I think it's impossible to say right now what exactly is going to happen tomorrow, let alone in a few weeks. Yeah, I hear that Tyson Fury lubrication creams run out as well. <laughs> Good luck getting some more at the moment. Exactly. Harder to get than soap. Apparently so. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't know you didn't know that. But yeah, the board did put out today that... They were going to review it at the start of April. They put a statement out today saying that there will be no boxing in May. That's why, obviously, Eddie Hearns had to reschedule his three shows uh, for the summer. I think so we've it's had... only the end of May. End of May, yes. Right, right. Yeah. Well, the board have been dealing with other things today as well. Yes, I think they have. Your thoughts? Oh, Billy Joe. Do you know... The weird thing is, I, I haven't seen the video of him hitting the bag and saying blah, 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 what he said um, and what he got penned for. But the first video I did see of him was him delivering water for the NHS. Mm. Um, he's always done this and said silly things. Katie Taylor, um, you know, the Olympics back when he was 18, you know, um, flashing for a laugh at the woman cleaning his room. Um, look, you know Billy, I know Billy. He, he's like a mate to us. He's like a mate when he knows you, he, he, you know. And, and you know, sometimes I have to say to him, oh, look, no, be serious. I want to do a proper interview with you. You know, I want to do a serious interview today. I want to do a good, good story. You know, he's just got that way about him that he can't stop himself doing it. And I just think it's, it's so foolish. And just why he's putting that stuff on social media, I don't know whether he wants the attention. Clearly, he doesn't want the attention in that way. Um, and he's, he's about to come into the biggest fight of his life, and he does that. I don't know if it's out of boredom or trying to get a rise, or but it's really foolish in the extreme, you know, it, 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 because he's actually not like that. That's what's so annoying. He's not like that as a person. You, you know, he's not... He's just, a, he's just a joker. He's a japester. He might dig you in the ribs, dig me in the ribs when he sees us, give you a hug. Um, tell you some jokes, some blue jokes, but at a time like this, when there's not a lot of news around, it makes you big news in terms of sports news when you when you say and do something like that. It's very, um, you know, it, 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 it's a double-edged sword, but the board suspending his license until they have a hearing, um, <laughs> it's a weird one, because if there's no boxing for four or five months... He, he could actually slide through, but it's really not a clever thing to do when you're about to fight Saul Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin's also in the mix. Because when we come back, if we are out a long time, a lot of these guys who are having their... And Billy jo, I'm not counting Billy Joe against Canelo as a, a semi-final fight, but because I think it's a really good fight and I was really looking forward to it. Um... Because I, I genuinely think he could put up a brilliant showing against Canelo. Um, but they're talking about the third Golovkin fight. They might just pass that by now and go straight to the third Golovkin fight. You don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the problem. He puts his own fight career in jeopardy. Apart from the fact 
you just can't say that kind of thing, even as a joke. You know, you just can't do it. You cannot do it. And you certainly cannot put it out on social media. Because as you know, you and I have a laugh. Sometimes I go slightly over the edge. So do you and everyone does. But what we've got to be aware of is this is a broadcast right now. You know, I might be having a little tipple of tequila. I'm not drunk. I'm just having my evening tequila. But you've just got to be careful what you say. Yeah, I mean, it's... <laughs> It's a strange situation. I mean, it's a strange situation. I don't know what was going on in, in Billy's mind when that video got posted or done or whatever, but you're right in what you're saying, that Billy Joe Saunders isn't kind of, he's not vindictive and he's not kind of a malicious person. And he doesn't actually have those thoughts of what he was saying. That's what frustrating. But then if you don't really know Billy Joe Saunders, then what else are you meant to think, I suppose? But we, me and you both know that Billy Joe Saunders doesn't have those thoughts about women. I know that. You know that, but the general public and other people kind of watching these clips don't know that. Do you know, I'll tell you another thing, right? Do you remember when Vinnie Mitchell died, Kevin Mitchell's brother? Of course. Billy gave money towards the funeral, you know? I didn't know that. No, a lot of people don't know things. He does lots of stuff like that, you know? And, you know, that's... Like, why not just say that? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We get slated for saying you've done something good rather than... Well, I know he's done loads of things. I know that he's done loads of things that never gets mentioned. I know that the NHS uh, giving the water was was publicised the other day, but there's a lot of stuff that Billy Joe Saunders does, a lot that he just... People don't even know. Like I said, I didn't even know that, what you said about Vinnie Mitchell's funeral. So, And there's loads of stuff that I could tell you now that you wouldn't know. But, you know... But um, anyway, coming back to life, Gareth, um, what, how do you feel with your days? What do you do? Um, well, I mean, last week I caught up with, I, what I'm trying to do is have a structure um, of washing my kitchen every day, right? I've got, I, when this all kicked in, I did like, I bought a load of deliveries of stuff because I, I had did have this heart procedure and I thought I've got a hold I've got a hole up because I am a bit vulnerable because of it for a little while. Um, so I've got deliveries coming. Whenever you get like a box through the through the door now, you've got to kind of sanitize your house. So I'm I'm doing a lot of cleaning. <laughs> um, I'm kind of going to bed late. Weirdly, I find it hard to sleep and and going to bed's like like late. Um, I'm uh, the Telegraph is very, very active because, you know, it's a newspaper and we're sharing a lot of ideas. I'm very busy with them at the moment. Um, COVID and non-COVID ideas. Last week, I, I say I, I interviewed uh, Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren, Bob Arum, Scott Coker, um, Rob Smith, um, Rob Smith again today. Um, I just my first week was kind of catching up and seeing where the where the top end are doing things. Saturday night, I sat at my desk in my kitchen. Um, got another desk in there where I work. I'm here in my sitting room uh, where I where I work at the moment. This is where I sit and work most days at home. And um, I got got a nice nice boxing library up there. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, we can see some of it. Yeah, we can see some of it. Boxing library up there, but um, sorry, very untechnical in the way of swinging my laptop around there. But that works, it, whatever works. Uh, but the, but the, um, but I um, I did talk sport radio show on Saturday night from home from one of those Yeti microphones. Um, not the same as going in the studio though. Um, we had Liam Williams on. Um, I got him to look in his fridge. Um, we had a very heightened Scott Fitzgerald on. Um, and we had, who else do we have on? Josh Warrington, Bob Arum again. Uh, Frank Smith was on, sounding a bit kind of like, Ugh. and apparently uh, Emily Eubank is, uh, is beating him on the runs they're going on all the time. As he said, she beats him at most things. Um, so um, I've had meetings with other magazines that I work for, planning ahead. Um, I was doing an isolation diary for a new 
Last week, every day, I did an isolation diary for a um, Limor, L-I-M-O-R. It's put together by Shane Monaghan, a former professional rugby player. So it's just doing little podcasts about being in isolation, talking about the situation. Um, watched a couple, watched that um, Tiger King, watched a few. Yeah. I, it's the kind of thing just to watch in one sitting on your own. It's absolutely mad. Murder, intrigue, big cats, mad, mad cat fucking people in America. Um, I'm talking to family every day on, on, on WhatsApp. I've got two daughters talking to them, talking to my parents who live in Cyprus. Um, they're, they're holed up there, talking to other family members, making sure everyone's all right. I've got a nephew who's in Maastricht with his girlfriend in a little village. Was just catching, just like trying to structure my days and be busy. Cool. Um, cycling for an hour every day out into the lanes here. Um that's it, really. I mean, how are you? How are you structuring your day at the moment? Um, I'm just literally during the day, just trying to get interviews. To be honest, Gareth, it's, you'd think it was easier because everyone's at home, but it's not necessarily the case. Um, Sponsored by what is that? Tibet. Oh, now this is a a War Chisora T-shirt. A War Chisora. Oh, okay. G- Gareth, let me ask you: Did you see Eddie Hearn do an impression of you earlier? No. Would you like to see it? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, aren't I? So, yeah. Let me see if I can get this up. I bet she starts talking like this, doesn't he? Yeah, so I'm Gareth they know. I bet he just does that, doesn't he? I'm going to try and find it in there. Uh, uh, Edwin. Uh, Edwin. Uh, Edwin. Okay, yeah. Um, so, Eddie, yeah. Um, so, wait. Who's that? Who's John Fury? No, I'm just reading one of the comments. Who's John Fury? Right. Hold on, yeah, he'll come on after this. I'm gonna slap him all over the place. Here it comes. I think you're next. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, so Eddie, yeah, um, so when you um uh, when we talk about um when we talk about MMA, you know, and obviously I mean uh, you and I you and I are total uh, fucking total workaholics, total fucking workaholics. <laughs> Eubank. There's a there's a little there's a ten percent of Chris Eubank in there as well, by the way, for some reason. He might have combined the two. Listen, remember, if he'd been to public school in um not in Essex. He probably would have. Remember, Eddie's a public schoolboy. Never forget that. You know. No, he's very good. He's very, he's very good on the accents. You know. Um, I, I have said that to him before about being workaholic. So, and he's more of a workaholic than I am. Um, and I'm glad. To, I'm glad to see, with all of them, when I spoke to them last week, that they are taking the time to really enjoy their families. Mm. That's that's one of the things I think we're all doing at the moment. We're really appreciating our families as much as it's hard being cooped up together or being on our own. Um, yeah, but he's he's brilliant on the accent, said he's brilliant. You know, I do fear though that he will not get. Um, I don't think we're going to see Anthony Joshua in a massive stadium till September. You know, I really don't. I can't see. 80,000 people coming together or even feeling safe about coming together. That, who's to say, I don't want to talk about COVID all the time, but what happens if that thing spikes again? Mm, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. It's too, it's too early to predict anything. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We generally don't. We're watching the news like everyone else and listening to Boris Johnson and the government's advice, etc., etc. But we don't actually know what's going on day to day to start thinking about what's going to happen in April, May, June. Yeah, we haven't seen Boris for three days. He's, we haven't seen him. Well, he's been doing his video updates on his phone, hasn't he? Yeah, so. yeah but, you know, we don't. We, we only see him from there down. He could be dying from there down. You don't know. I mean, like, you know, he's, he, you don't know how well he is or not, you know? I mean, um, you know, I, I need him to stay well because I want that cage fight with him. I want that cage fight with him eventually. Well, hopefully he, he does kind of recover quickly and uh, 
get back to being on the front line. It can't be easy. It's for a great job. I think. I, I mean, I'm not a huge um, critic in general, anyway, of politicians. I mean, I've had a lot of dealings with them in my career, and, and they they all lie. It's as simple as that. They all lie. Um, but they, because they they come in and they want to do something, and they can't do it, and they want to keep their position, and they they. They, they don't do things they tell you they're categorically going to do, certainly around the sports ministers I'm talking about that I've dealt with, seven or eight of them over time. Um, but I think I think they, act, they reacted and acted fairly quickly with this. And I just think it's the equipment for the people working in the NHS right now that is really important because those people, I feel a bit, I feel a bit, I don't know if you feel this sometimes where, like, I'm not in a fit state to volunteer and I've still got a job that I've got to do. I can't just give up my job and go and do it because I'm still doing my job. But I really admire the people that uh, um, have volunteered to to help with the NHS. And I hope that when all the honours list goes out at the end of this year, it goes out to so many of those people, you know. And, uh, and the returning retired NHS workers that are coming back to work as well. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Right, Gareth, I'm not going to take any more of your time. I appreciate you giving us 32 minutes tonight. So maybe we'll have another update from you next week in a week's yeah, time. Happy to do a weekly chat with you, Poots. Definitely very happy to do that. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I'll just finish off by saying we were at Fury Wilder 2 probably, what, five weeks ago now. And it's yeah. crazy to even think that that went on, like that went ahead, rather. It's mad to think that we it, was it, that it, it, went ahead. Imagine, right, if this had kicked off uh, five weeks ago or eight weeks ago or, or at the beginning of the year, I had a massive women's MMA fight in Los Angeles, uh, Zola, um, Julia Budd against uh, Cyborg, Chris Cyborg. The week before I had Conor McGregor, that was just in January in Vegas, right? In February, I was on the move two weeks with... Wilder in Alabama, then all the big Fury build up, saw Fury in January. January and February were awesome, yeah. Imagine if we'd had it two months earlier and we'd missed out on all of that. We had an incredible start to the decade and then this shuddering halt. I can't believe you and I see each other every day during that event more than once, you know, for the whole week in Vegas. You know, we might have a little cheroot together outside or whatever. Do you know what I mean? But you know, in the odd little drink, but it, it's it's almost unimaginable now that we were at one of the greatest events we've ever been at, yeah, with you and I getting more access than anyone else to Tyson Fury into his dressing room, apart from the broadcasters, you know, as, as working people in the industry as individuals, and then here we are five weeks later, forced apart, um, and just being able to chat on Skype. It's extraordinary. You, 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 you could not have dreamt it up. You could not have dreamt it up, you know? Yeah. We can pray for better times. Um, Gareth, yes. thank you very much for talking to us. Appreciate it, as always. And like I said, yeah, we'll catch up with you again next week and, and kind of give us, uh, like, a weekly roundup of your... Love to, mate. Anytime. Okay. Gareth Davies, thank you very much.